What's going on, everybody? Today's research and development revolves around the process of organic weed control using steam. Steam can kill the seed bank that weeds set up in the soil. In addition to that, um, it's a lot safer than flames. It won't melt your irrigation lines. As you can see, these plastic bags are not being destroyed. And it won't damage your mulch or any painted surfaces that you may be working near. What's going on, fellas? Today, this video is for Tom. He has commissioned my help on his blueberry farm to implement organic weed control. I wanted to show him the success of the test today. And Tom, I gotta tell you, I've got a new device in mind for you. It's not gonna look anything like the steam cleaner, but uh, we learned some good stuff today and we killed a lot of weeds. I don't think they're coming back from this. So let's take a look at what this looked like before I got my hands on it and uh, I'll show you what I did this with. So today I'm gonna kill some weeds with steam for a gentleman named Tom who owns an organic blueberry farm. He wants me to try and help him out in that area. Now some of the machines they currently have are massive and cost thousands of dollars. Basically a propane tank and an air compressor and a garden hose are some of the main components. You're gonna need a Nobox 7 steam cleaner tool to pull this off. Okay, so the question is, why would you use steam versus just a flame? Well, first of all, there's something about the flame, they say that typically it won't kill the seed bank in the top of the soil. And they've done a lot of testing on this in the agricultural world, and it's been determined that steam is far more effective at killing the soil seed bank, which causes the weeds to immediately recuperate. That's why weeds are so hard to deal with. It's not the plant itself, usually. Watch this dandelion just fall to its death. This is pretty cool. Just like on the commercial. <laughs> it, it does a great job of just cooking the plants. Here's another one. You can see if you just hit that center bulb and cook that center, they say that's the part that's hardest to kill. So you, you want to literally cook the plant. It smells like a, a weed soup. But for the most part, the, the main benefit is, is we're killing, we want to kill the seed bank in the soil. And we also, we want that steam to be shot into the plants, not on the top of the plants. You see how I'm hitting down on the side? That causes the steam to enter the foliage and then rise up everywhere else. The first test I did, I was merely spraying the plants, like I was painting them. That's not the way to go with this thing. You wanna spray the steam into the foliage and cause it to burst out elsewhere so you're not just losing all your steam. Now, one of the secondary constituents of this torch that really make it work so effective is the fact that a very powerful hot blast of air is coming out of this burner, which makes it extremely suitable for this kind of work. It, it, depending on how high you have it turned up, the flame reaches the nozzle that you see there. It's invisible right now because the sun is out, but there's just a little bit of a tip of a flame right there, and it does drastically increase the kill rate of this tool, and that's what sets it apart from some of the other devices that are available for commercial purchase right now. The problem is they'll set you back about $15,000 to $30,000. I don't know what they're thinking, but that's the price for the steam machines that they currently have on the market that put out about this much steam. They might do a little bit more, but because we have the hot air blast coming off the monotube steam boiler, I think this thing might be just as effective as the $15,000 units. You be the judge of that. You get online and you watch their kill rate, how fast they kill the weeds. Notice I'm not using a steam cone or a steam shroud, which is what a lot of their devices require. They have to shroud the plant inside a cocoon and cook it. Whereas this one here is powerful enough to get the job done with a minimal amount of equipment. And you can reach areas that wouldn't be applicable with a cone or some kind of crazy shroud setup like a lot of these devices have. We're using extremely high temperature steam here. As you can see, the superheater coil is actually red hot on this gun. So the temperature of the steam coming out of that nozzle is sporadic, 
Occasionally, because of the surging, you'll get a burst of wet steam inside of that superheated steam, which is good. You can see it's not catching the leaves on fire. We are not burning plastic. Um, we're good to go. It will melt plastic if you're not careful. I mean, this thing isn't completely fail safe. Um, we're going to see here in a second. We're going to melt the plastic a little bit because an invisible side flame coming out of the torch will be exposed right about in here. Notice how effectively it just cooks these leaves though. See that little burn in the plastic right there? So you do got to mind the torch. It, it can damage things if you're not careful. Um, just like any other tool, a chainsaw could just totally cut that bag in half, you know. So don't be afraid of it. It is a dangerous device. You do need to wear safety gloves and goggles. And as I said before, the trick that I learned, you see that steam rushing up out of the plants there? That is the theme you want to keep going. You want to use that steam underneath the grass as much as you can. We're not painting the things here, which is what I did the first time. I walked out there like I'm painting the grass. That's really not what we want to do here. So this method I have found to be the optimum way of killing the weeds. You can also see we've got that powerful hot air blast from the torch. That hot air blast is about 500 degrees in some instances, but because of entrained flow and the Venturi effect, it's cooled down a little bit. That's why it didn't melt that plastic unless you got right up on it. There we go. We're cooking underneath the plant. You see how I'm not aiming it on the plant and they're just wilting over? Then you go ahead and give them a little cook down after that. You want to warm them up first by steaming underneath the plant. That's also keeping in mind the fact that we want to bake that seed bank to death and kill those seed weed, or weed seeds, so to say. So that's one of the main benefits of steam. A lot of people are asking me, why not just burn it? Well, if you've got a real fancy mulch bed and a bunch of uh, irrigation lines or an air conditioning system or anything that you really don't want to catch on fire or melt, I mean... There's one good reason right there. Second, they say that because of something called film effect, the, um, the flame temperatures don't get the ground hot. This steam has something called Latin heat, which means there's a phase change energy. When steam turns back into water, a tremendous amount of energy was released. And then after that happens, guess what? You've got some water that's 212 degrees sitting there. So not only is the water 212 degrees, but it, it releases its phase change packet of energy, which is huge. Um, if you're not into thermodynamics and physics, that won't make any sense to you. But once you see the numbers on paper, it's kind of shocking that such a phenomenon exists. There's a lot of energy wrapped up in just the phase change alone. This is a really good shot right here. It, the residence time for the weed you're killing is, is going to be different throughout the species. Some plants, just a light brush, will instantly take them out and kill them. The wetter, the thicker the plant, um, the more resilient it's going to be. These weeds are fairly resilient, but you see these little darker leaf plants inside of there, the little tiny flowers? Those die almost immediately with even the slightest bit of steam. And from what I'm observing in these tests today, is that if you have an expensive crop that you're trying not to damage, um, the plants can withstand a subtle blast of steam without any damage. The day before I came out here and blasted this whole area in what I called an economical phase to see if you could kill with a minimal amount of steam, well, it turns out the plants can take a substantial blast with steam. So don't worry about hurting your produce or your crop with this thing because it takes a lot of direct contact to actually pull the job off. Now, as far as the economics are concerned and the cradle to grave mathematics, I have not completed that part of the research. I'm going to purchase a scale in the near future to measure the propane tank, to determine the flow rate of propane that we're seeing right here. I do believe that because we're killing the seed bank, that um, we're going to get a lot of bang for our buck. It's going to take a long time for these weeds to come back. Um, I don't have any of the footage yet. A couple of days later, we're going to get that. But uh, 
for the most part, that's what I came up with today. Don't directly spray the weeds. You see how I'm hitting the bottom, the base? I'm letting that steam that's rising up through the foliage to preheat and pre-cook everything. And then as you progress, look how they just kind of start to fall over for you. And then you just cook it as you go. If the leaves don't change a dark color, you typically have not denatured them, as, the, as they call it. Once the cells have denatured, then they've basically been cooked. They've, the membrane has burst open, and um, they're not coming back from that. The, the plant will die. So, see these uh, leaves I'm hitting right here, these plants with little flowers on them? Those are killed very easily with the steam. And also the hot air. we got to remember, there's a, a tremendous, this is like the most powerful hair dryer you have ever seen in your life. It has the power of about 12 hair dryers when it comes to the hot air that's coming off of this thing. So in addition to the steam, again, I will repeat, probably said it 10 times, the hot air is con contributing to the performance of this device. And that is an attribute that some of those $15,000 models um, lack so not trying to knock the other guy here I'm just trying to make organic food cheaper man I mean I don't want you guys to have to pay fifteen to thirty thousand dollars and you can look that up for a steam weed control system that's ridiculous it doesn't have to be that expensive and you know what from my perspective guys and girls they're doing it wrong they're doing it wrong. I don't like the equipment. Okay, Tom, as much as I would like to wait and get some footage a couple of days on down the line, I'm going to go ahead and upload this video for you and show you that today was a blazing success. We have killed these weeds. And you can tell by looking at them, they're not coming back from that, I don't think. And as I said, in addition to the steam, this torch puts off a hot air blast. I think the hot air blast is probably 40% of the power of, of the weed killing ability we're looking at here. The hot air column coming off of this bad boy is definitely attributing to the death of these weeds or the life of organic f food eaters, whatever one you want to call it. And just to prove to you that I'm totally on board with this whole process, Tom, uh, let me show you something. There's about a... $80 organic soup right here. Food that actually won't kill you when you eat it. So I am digging this, man, look at them beets. I'm digging this whole idea, Tom, and I'm glad that you brought me on board and uh, we're gonna get you fixed up.